Hello traders, today is August 27 and it's around 11 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, welcome to another video about gold and in this video we'll just go over few notes from past week um, what I'm trying to show here is that inflation worldwide is under control and you can see this from the from the number more or less it's it's under control uh, we are not expecting inflation to skyrocket like it happened before because of central banks are controlling the the interest rate so so far this is under control also the labor market is very powerful so it's unlikely to see a recession because people make money from their jobs they spend the money uh, they boost businesses businesses expand so this cycle um, recession is a contraction in the economy and i don't see i don't see it happening this is my opinion Anyhow, we move forward to last Friday. The, um, the main event for last week economic calendar when Federal Reserve uh, Chair Jerome Powell uh, spoke at the Jackson Hall and he emphasized the potential necessity for the US Federal Reserve to implement additional interest rate hikes. Now, remember from the last maybe video or two, we said that we expect um, Powell in his speech after the Fed decision on the 26th of July to keep all his options open. And I think this is a continuation. He is just mentioning in this part that they could increase the interest rates and then later uh, in the speech he suggested that the fed could hold the rates steady at its next meeting in september so they are just trying to keep all the options at the table to avoid surprising the market they don't need they don't want to surprise the market from the fundamental analysis perspective, this, the, the, the center point of attention is directed towards the Eminem Federal Reserve meeting slated for the 20th of September. No change probability dropped from 90 to 80 percent after Powell's speech last Friday and from 63 to 44.5 for November. And as I said, he hinted that the Fed could hold rates steady. You can access this page from cmegroup.com and search for Fed Watch tool. And you would see here the 80% and the 44%. Those were 90 and 63 last week. Now the USD throughout the entire week the US dollar had held its ground above the impressive 103 mark, proudly surpassing not just one but all three of its daily moving averages. The air was charged with an terrifying sense of optimism as the bullish spirit stood firm as the week reached its grand finale. The USD didn't miss a beat, pushing forward with unyielding momentum i didn't expect this i was i wasn't expecting us dollar to hold steady and the bulls to continue the move i was expecting some sort of retreat so based on last week analysis i my analysis wasn't very accurate or it turned out not to be very accurate 
And the excitement didn't stop there. As we eagerly await the September gathering of the Fed, the USD finds itself at the mercy of economic data, eagerly watching the twists and turns of inflation number and employment figures. And as we will see next week, is a loaded week with news. And starting Tuesday, I think with the jolt figures, we will see this in a bit. Every day could move the market in either direction. So uh, next week, expect some fireworks. So the stage is set for a trading performance where each data point holds the potential to shape the USD destiny. This is the chart from tradingview.com. April 27th, it was like 5 p.m. a few hours ago. And at this point, I would say maybe two, three, four days ago, uh, at this red bar, I was expecting the USD to lose ground. But it didn't happen. And the bulls continue the journey upward. From a technical perspective now, multiple indicator indicators pointing to an extremely overbought conditions on the daily charts suggesting a potential correction. The stochastic momentum uh, index or indicator this one is clearly losing momentum and all the top three are in overbought uh, territory. Now concerning gold at the start of the week, gold shattered its multi-week low, which was set at 1886.8 and it went all the way to 1884.9. However, a sudden bullish resurgence swiftly took charge, leading to the formation of an impressive sequence of three consecutive green daily bars. And this rally reached its pinnacle on Wednesday, with gold surging to a peak of 1920.4. I think we've seen 1923, if I'm not mistaken. And the subsequent days witnessed a change in sentiment. And this is, this is very important, guys. You would see the two doji bars on Thursday and Friday. This is showcasing a blend of market forces at play. The market... A doji is a candlestick pattern in chart analysis characterized by its resemblance to a cross. It indicates a situation where the opening and closing prices are nearly identical and this often, of, uh, this often signifies indecision or potential trend reversal in the market. We will see what will happen next Friday, by, but I don't know. This is, this is my expectation. Uh, we might see a push in gold, maybe to the 1930-1950 range, and then um, the data uh, will dictate the direction for the USD and gold. From technical analysis, as preview previously noted, the USD finds itself in an overbought region, potentially paving the way for gold to experience a minor upswing, as I just said, perhaps even testing the 50-day moving average at 19.30. However, as I will elaborate on shortly, the ultimate influence lies with fundamental factors that will exert the authority over both the USD and gold in the weeks ahead. The period leading up to September 20 coinciding with the upcoming Fed meeting, promises a dynamic landscape where significant developments are anticipated. 
you should be very careful because nobody knows what is going to happen and expect a lot of volatility during the coming weeks. Recently, the lower boundary of the channel um, where is the chart? Here. At 19.05. This was breached. Causing gold to temporary step outside it. However, it's noteworthy that gold has once again resumed trading within this channel. From technical perspective, the breach of the range's lower limit suggests that its effectiveness could be in question, but I would consider the upper limit to be intact so far. Looking for support, and is it, this is the Bollinger Bands. We have gold resistances 1930, the 50 days moving average, 1949, Bollinger Bands upper band, 1951, the 20 weeks moving average. 57, the 100 days moving average, 72, July 31st, high 81, the channel upper line, as I just, just said, 82 is July 27, and 87, 1987 is July 20th high. So the 80s is, is a very solid resistance area. For the support, the 1910, which is August 11 low, 1903.85, uh, Thursday low, 902 July 6, 900 of course psychological level, 1893 the June 29th, from 1885 until 1880 this is should, this should act as solid support, then followed by the 1872, which is the 50 weeks moving average, and 1850, which is the 100 weeks moving average. We have about 120, 130 points range, if you will, for potential swing trade uh, during the coming uh, a few weeks. This is the first time I include a technical indicator. I'm going to add one every week and this week it's the MACD. Um, I mentioned about the two doji bars and this might be positive for the gold. The MACD on the daily chart Although there was a crossover on the 24th of August, but this move faded on Friday as gold closed near the open, forming the doji bar. And the, the MACD lines are in negative territory at around minus 13 now, which is not very bullish. But the histogram is slowly building up momentum. We need to see the lines crossing the zero lines before we get excited. On the weekly, both lines are above zero, but the first line is below the slow line, the nine weeks exponential moving average, and the histogram is still below zero. We need the line to cross and see some upward momentum building in the histogram above the zero line during the coming weeks leading to the Fed meeting. Next week, as I said, is packed with news, so I expect a highly volatile week. Let's go over the economic calendar real quick. On Tuesday, the JOLTS job opening. Wednesday, German CPI. And the ATB, ADP non farm employment change and then this is from the US and then the US GDP and on Thursday we have the German, un German 
unemployment uh, rates and the CPR from Europe and the Fed favorite inflation indicator, the PCE on Thursday at 8.30 and the initial, initial jobless claim claims and finally on Friday the non-farm payroll. That's it for now. Uh, sorry, and the ISM at 10 o'clock on Friday. That's it for now. Good luck everyone and have a wonderful week.